All right, well, welcome everyone to our live lesson for uh, this time. It is April 12th, and we are here in a beautiful, sunshiny Nashville today, and I'm so excited to have my great friend Dino Paston. Thank you so Thanks much, Dino, for being here with us. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> Pleasure. Uh, Dino has been a good friend um, for many, many years. Dino has played for Wow, just about everybody in the country mm -hmm. music world. Um, he is uh, one of the members of Alabama's band that goes around and, and, uh, and plays and played on their reunion tour and all of that sort of stuff. Played with Barbara Mandrell, He's played with uh, CC Winans. I played with him with Donna Summer. We Donna played Summer Donna we Summer together. Yeah. Uh, so we've done a lot of things together and he's a wonderful musician. So. Uh, I'm anxious to uh, get started and you guys ask questions uh, as we get started. We'll cover a few things before we get, uh, uh, get down to the questions part. But this is a, this is a little bit a different lesson than we have done before because we're wanting to do a giveaway. It is April Blues Showers Month, so we are going to do a giveaway of a blues course, which is actually this blues course. And uh, in fact, I thought about this that it would be great if we could autograph this. Yay. So Dino and I are gonna autograph this. Dino, why don't you put your... Yes, so. Why don't you sign that? Sign that for us. And as we get into the lesson, uh, whoever's logged in at 7.30 uh, into the Ustream login, we will um, um, have a... Uh, we will pick a winner. Actually, I will not pick a winner. Uh, someone who is secret will pick a winner and uh, and then they will let me know so uh, and then at 730 or so we will have that pick and then whoever wins we will send this off to you and we have just signed that thank you Dino for doing that Thank you. My and uh, we will get that off so we're, it's gonna be a great blues night so to get it started we're gonna play a little bit of an E blues um, with uh, I've got my acoustic guitar um, going on here and Dino's gonna play keys and a little bit of harmonica. Dino, <laughs> Dino plays all kinds of instruments. He plays uh, saxes and uh, keys. Harmonica? What else? Uh, a little bit of accordion, a little bit of vibes, a little bit of congas and uh, percussion. Pretty much ADD. Pretty much just, <laughs> just, I, I can't sit still. I don't know. <laughs> if you want to see what Dino has done in the past and, and the great things that Dino has done, you can look on YouTube uh, underneath Barbara Mandrell, and what was the... Uh, just go to Barbara Mandrell, type in Barbara Mandrell, uh, Last Dance, and that's her farewell uh, tour that she did, and we did a concert there, and, and there's other other concerts that are there too, but the, start with the Last Dance, and you could just see uh, some of the things that, that I've done with Barb. She's a great entertainer. I learned so much from her, and uh, just uh, blessed to, to be part of all of that. All and right. part of this. Hey, hey. All right, let's play a little bit before you guys get bored on us. All right. Here, one. It's just kind of an E blues sort All of right. thing is what we're doing. Two. Oh, one, two, three. Oh.
you go, a little impromptu E blues there. So uh, hopefully you could hear everything all right. And uh, it's great, uh, great having Dino here. Wow, you're you're great. Fun. A lot of fun. Man. It's great. <laughs> um, there's several things that I wanted to talk about today. Um, being that we have Dino here and uh, uh, access to be able to accompany a little bit, I'm going to put my acoustic down and grab an electric. I can get this in this tricky holder. Grab my electric. So hopefully you guys can hear that all right. And we're going to talk about some, we had some questions about some of the blues progressions that we had uh, talked about last week. So in continuing on, let me just kind of teach you a few things with the, some of the blues progressions that we, we had worked on last time. Last time I taught you about the basic blues progression, which if you remember is one chord to the four chord, back to the one for two bars, and then two bars of four, two bars of one, then a five, and a four, and then we're back to a one. So I, I copied out some variations of some blues that I thought maybe Dino and I could play through, and you could hear some of these different variations of uh, some blues things. Let me kind of get along a little bit more of a blues tone here. <laughs> All Sounds right. like you paid your dues with that. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> I wish I could turn it up louder. It's going to screw up the sound. So we're just going to have to pretend that I'm rocking the house and that there's this huge Marshall stack uh, <laughs> behind me. So um, we're going to play uh, a simple, we did, let's do just a regular basic blues, which is that first one there, Dino, in okay. G. So we're going to just going to do that so you can kind of hear how these changes are sounding. Let me kind of get my sound up here. That's not going to be loud enough. All right, you guys tell me if that is too loud or not, not loud enough. So here we go. We're going to do a basic blues in G. This is the standard blues form. A two, a one, two, three. <laughs> some of the more modern interpretations of blues, instead of that five and four in that last line, or the last four bars, five, four, one, and one, they change it and they're gonna put a two, and then the five, and then the one. So instead of five, four, one, one, it's gonna be two, five, one, and then we'll maybe throw a five in there to get us back to the top. So let me play it for you and we'll see how, it, try to listen to see what the difference hearing that thought in the two in the place of the five. Sorry, I'm kind of tripping over my words here. Let's try it one more time. Two with that second progression. Two. All right. A one, two. Here's the two.
something like that. Okay, well that's how the two minor sounds in there replaced instead of the five. So it's a traditional blues thing, except we change the last line to do two minor and then five and then one. One of the questions on the board was, um, gosh, Steve, are you just thinking that up on the fly? Or are you just uh, uh, know those or how is that coming? Well, you actually just kind of learn them. And so there's a bunch of variations of them and you play them over the years and, and you kind of learn different ways of twisting around these various chords. So. Uh, let me play one, uh, let's do one more, one or two more. This one is a little bit more involved. It throws some two fives before some of the chords. So like the four chord in the second bar, which we're in G, so we're going from a G chord to a C chord, but we're gonna throw in in front of that C chord a little two five, a little mini two five going to that C. So the first measure will be G, then D minor, G, C. And then we uh, go back to the one, and then it just spins it around. It takes a six minor, and then we do another two minor five heading into the four in bar uh, five there. I'll try and talk you through the chords. We'll play it really slowly, and I'll try and talk you through them. It starts on a, um, starts on a G7. We're going to do it slow. Two, one, two, G7 here. Here comes the D minor. C, two, E minor, D minor, C7. Now here's an A minor. A minor off the scale. Here's a two minor. Back up the top, G7. D minor to that C. Back to the G. E minor to a D minor. I'll try to put these progressions on the uh, website. that's not way too helpful to you guys without the music uh, I will try and put those uh, the sheet music to that up when we uh, uh, get done here and I'll try and have that up by tomorrow so we can we can play that for you um, cool do you see how that works we're just I'm taking what makes the blues the blues is really only one change that's in you starting on the one and in bar five you go to the four chord that's what makes the blues the blues is that change right there the one in bar one going to the five, uh, or in bar five going to the four chord. That G going to the C, that makes it blues and it being 12 bars long. Very good. Very good. I'm talking the whole time. Do you know what you want to add? I'm your... learning. I'm learning. I'm learning this. I like these. I, I like should these be learning. changes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I should be learning from you. You're the one that has done all this stuff. Uh, I know this in theory. You've done this on stages oh, no. across the across the globe. That's the beauty about music, man. You never stop learning. That's right. Always, always learn. That's right. So that's great. Um, one of the uh, progressions that we did last uh, time that seemed to really throw everybody off is uh, this bottom one down here, which really gets crazy. Sorry, Dino. I kind of had to just scribble that one. That's so we're going to be in the key of B flat, which was the key that we were in when we did this last live lesson. And this was kind of the most complex of the chord changes. Um, let me just talk you through it real quick and then we'll play it for you. So in bar one, it, is, it has a B flat. Then, yeah, Dino, watch play it for us. So the, the first bar is a B flat. Then it goes bar two to an A minor seven flat five to a D seven. If you want to think of it, it's like the two five going to the six minor, which is, and then that works its way down to the F minor, which is bar four to the five coming to the four chord, which is E flat. And then in bars, what is that, six? It goes E flat minor. And then we just work our way down in two fives. D to a G. OK? 
okay? And then in bar nine, the two minor, C minor, to an F. And then we just did what we call in the business a three, six, two, five, which is D minor to a G to a C minor seven to an F seven. Let me pause right on that. A true three, six, two, five would be D minor, G minor, C minor, and then the five, which would be the F seven. So a, a true three, six, two, five would be three minor, six minor, two minor, because all of you theory guys, of course, know that the three, the six, and the two are all minor chords in any key. But if you, sometimes when you put it in this, a progression like this, we have the three being the D minor, and we will slip in, instead of the six, which would be a minor, we're gonna slip in a G seventh there, which kind of makes it seem like a two five going into the two five of the chord of B flat. Uh, man, I'm gonna have a lot to explain in the music when I write this out tomorrow. So anyway, so three, six, two fives are, are a great way to turn around songs. So anyway, let's play this one. Um, so. Yeah, we'll do a little out there. Here we go, one, two, a one, two, B flat. best blues performance there but we're just we're, as we're learning these progressions so anyway that's some idea of some different types of progressions that you can do uh, as you're going through and playing your blues um, playing your different patterns I'll try and write those out and put them onto uh, the discussion board so you guys can uh, can uh, have those do you have any questions about that let me kind of look at some of these questions going by um, um, I'm All right. One guy says, what in the world are you guys doing in there? Okay, y'all are saying that the audio is clipping, so let me turn down the audio real uh -oh. quick. Uh-oh. Let me turn down the audio so maybe that might help, uh, the clipping. So hopefully that doesn't, uh, hopefully that will, will work a little bit better for you. Let's play, um, Dino, should, let's should play. I ask, should I ask if this is, is that too loud? The piano or the guitar or both of us together. All right, while y'all are doing that, let's do, uh, let's do, uh, take the intro. Yeah. yeah. All right, while we are working out the sound issues, all right, 
It was piano, but it's okay now. All right. Oh, man, it was me. See, I always, piano players always want to be the loudest. <laughs> All right, so we're going to play a little jazz tune here for you. Um, Am I going direct in there? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Let me turn down a little bit. Let me turn down. Just, just pretend it's loud. Um, it's actually really quiet where we're at, so this is pretty difficult to, to do to play. It sound convincing when it's so quiet. We're gonna do take the A train um, and uh, see if we can uh, remember how this goes and uh, All right. a little bit. So Dino's gonna play sax and keyboard as well. Ready? Yep. One, two, one, two, a three, four, one, two.
Well, there you go. Something like that. Um, take the A Train, good old Duke Ellington tune that we're just kind of, uh, neither one of us had the music, so we're just kind of faking it along. But uh, we caught most of those chords in there, I think. So, uh, Dino, let's talk about uh, for a second um, sure. keyboards and guitar players working together. You've done a lot of work with that. So, what, what should I, what are you thinking as a keyboard player and working with a guitar player? Well, um, I think it's, uh, I mean, if a lot of it has to do with the relationship and, and just the concept. Uh, keep, we have to work together. Uh, it's, it's mandatory because that's how beautiful music is made. So um, as far as comping, and uh, I mean, as you noticed, uh, uh, when Steve was doing some comping and I was, I was doing some comping, uh, we try to stay away from each other. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do some real nice, uh, you know, uh, some, some uh, what are they, long notes, some whole notes, that kind of stuff. And, and what I love to do is I love to, um, uh, I love to hear the guitar. I think a guitar sets off a song, uh, in no matter what style it is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll hear keyboards and I'll hear everything else, but I'll, I always key in and go, man, what's a guitar doing? Because every time a guitar comes in and does something on a song, to me, uh, it, sets the, it sets the song uh, apart from, I mean, it, you, you could really uh, color a song so much with so many different guitar. It's, I'm a little bit jealous as a piano player because I can't play guitar. <laughs> but I love, I'm a frustrated guitar player, and, uh, but I can't play it at all. But, but, I, but I'll tell you what, I, I, when, when, I have, when I do sessions, when I record with it, I, um, especially when this guy's in the studio with me too, this guy's a, a great, uh, he knows exactly what to play. I, um, uh, you know, staying, out of, staying out of each other's way. Yeah. Um, that's really the, that's really the main key. thing, is staying out of each other's uh, harmonic territory, if you mm -hmm. want to think of it that way. Which you don't play. Yeah, is, a lot of it is, is a guitarist will get into uh, uh, grooves and colors, and a keyboard player is laying the foundation, but he can also do his colors too. So we just want to stay out of each other's way. If he's playing something busy, I don't want to play something busy. If that's I'm playing mindset. busy, then he's playing something more that's just a, a fill or a pad or whole notes or something like that. Uh, does that mean that he's less of a player? Not at all. It just is functional. Uh, sometimes you need more guitar. Sometimes you need more um, keyboard in a song. So just you're always serving the song. Um, and a lot of it is just getting out of each other's way. Sometimes if he's low or if he's really busy, if he's doing a big, uh, you know, Jerry Lee Lewis sort of a, a, a lick way up high, you know, and he's way up high, then I don't, I don't want to be way up high with him. That just gets in each other's harmonic range. So when he's doing something like that, I can be down here. Like that so we're just kind of staying out of each other's way and we've worked together a lot so we've done uh, all kinds of different different sessions and different uh, types of playing together so um, it's a little bit easier we kind of know how to work off of each other but Dean has worked in all kinds of groups uh, from small little things like duos to uh, very very large bands and things like that so he is listening he is listening He's listening too. yeah um, and you you want to find your own little piece of the puzzle if the if you have a regular simple chord change, it's maybe like a C, A minor, D minor, the F with the G of the bass. So just keep that going, C2. See how we're staying out of each other's way. And he's going to get a little bit 
busier up there. kind of learn how to work with each other. That was just basically a, a, a four uh, chord chord progression that we were going through there. It was a C or a C2. It's kind of more of a contemporary sound. So we did throw some twos and some minor ninths and minor elevenths in there. So we had a C2 going to an A uh, minor, uh, maybe A minor ninth or something like that. Two, we did the two minor, which is a D minor, and some flourish on that. And then we did uh, a five, which is kind of a, an F with a G in the bass, maybe a G11, something like that. And so we just kind of stayed out of each other's way. Let's play that one more time. I'll do the, I'll do the lead this time. One, okay. two, three, two, 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 ready, C. It is time for us to give away a blues guitar course. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, Tom, um, do you have a winner yet? If you do, let me, let me see if I can get you here, Tom. All right, Tom has told me that the winner of tonight's blues guitar course, you ready? This is exciting. We've never done this before. Dino, give us a chord there. Our winner is Little Trout. So if you are Little Trout, uh, and your discussion board name, I've been told, is Little Trout as well, and uh, uh, Tom will get your information from you. Uh, Little Trout, you just won yourself a Learn to Master Blues guitar course. So... Signed by the great Dino Paston. And so. Steve Krantz. <laughs> um, so there you go. Congratulations, Little Trout. That's a lot of fun. We've never done that before. Maybe we, do, we ought to do that again. Um, let's answer uh, a couple of questions that have come up on the board. Um, um, Bud C. asked that... Uh, in the one video that I had put up, which was us at the Nashville Jazz Workshop, where we did okay. the filming. Yeah, thing. I remember that. that um, it says, I noticed that both Dino and you were reading the music. Uh, couldn't see yours. Mine was actually off camera. That's correct. And was wondering if when you memorize a piece, do you play it by sound or by ear? Uh, or can you memorize it in exact time? Also, when improvising, how do you keep track of the measures? Okay. Um, several questions in there, bud. Um, that little piece that we were playing uh, in the video was just a uh, kind of a Latin thing. Um, C minor. Um, and then we, we hit the two, D minor 7 flat 5, and G augmented, back to C. Something like that. Basically, that was not really a song at all. That was really just a chord progression that we were playing there. I forget exactly what it was, but I think I remember yeah. it was in C minor, and uh, maybe it in D minor. I don't know. And we were jumping back between the minor, probably the four minor, and then the, did the two five, going into the minor there. So, uh, did, had we memorized that? Well, uh, basically, I probably figured that out about five minutes before they turned the cameras on, and I just shouted out four chords, and we just went round and round on those. And I would solo for a little while, and then Dino would solo for a little while, and then we kind of closed it up. So um, that one is a little bit different as far as a song, because that's not really a song. Uh, a lot of times you have memorized songs, like we did uh, 
um, whatever, the take, the, the, take, take the, the A train there, and that was uh, memorized. Uh, and <laughs> it wasn't memorized because we both sat down and studied real hard. It was <laughs> memorized because we played it, both of us, on countless smoky little jazz gigs for years and decades. So uh, over that course of time, you kind of learn a few tunes. So um, that one was memorized. Now, uh, you were asking about uh, how do we keep track of the measures when we're improvising as, we're, as you're looking at the music. Well, there's no trick to that. You, if, you're, if you're reading a piece of music and you're trying to solo over top of it, you just kind of have to keep track of how many beats are in each measure as they're coming by. And then as each measure comes by, you try and flip to the right chord of that measure. So you're, you're watching the music, keeping track of kind of as it's going by, what chord changes are, are in effect, and then you're trying to solo on top of that. So it's a little bit, when you're reading a piece of music and soloing, it's a little bit more of a, uh, uh, you kind of have to just read what the chords are as you're going by. As you, if you've uh, memorized it, then you, you kind of know what's coming and where you can go from that. So actually, it's, if you've memorized it or have some familiarity with the tune, then it's a little bit easier to do it. Um, then you kind of know where to go. If without that, and if you're just sight reading, you just kind of know where you're at, and you're not, uh, you're not as familiar by your ear where to go with that. What I do too is is I listen to the melody line. If you know the melody line, so you know A train is done. So I'm actually listening and thinking of the melody line as I'm playing my solo. You know, so I'm, I'm thinking of, then I know this chord's coming in. So there's two beats, I mean, there's two bars of C, and then there's two bars of D, flat five, right? So um, so that's, that's kind of how I, I, I think of the chords, and then I think of the melody line too, and then I, uh, you kind of after a while you just start you start you start feeling that those changes coming naturally. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Here. Yeah. yeah. So. And you want to leave a little space in your solos too, just like a singer would sing, and they have to take a breath every now and then. You don't want to just kind of solo solo just because we don't have to take a breath on guitar or piano. Uh, you want to melodically uh, speak in phrases as you're soloing, so you don't just want to go, you know, a whole run of five bars of eighth notes or something like that because that wouldn't make musical sense because you kind of want to hear things mm -hmm. in phrases. And so it's a good uh, little thing to keep in the back of your mind to phrase things like a singer would sing them uh, where they need to take a break after a certain period of notes. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I will say this too, that I think when we play together and it's just you and me, we don't have bass and drums mm -hmm. and other instruments, we tend to play through it too. So, so we're trying to keep rhythms and everything. So if you're by yourself and you find yourself Doing that more, that comes naturally, kind of, because I feel like, as you were saying right. it, I was, I was critiquing what I was playing, and I felt like, well, you know, as we were playing solos, I kept going. Had there been another, uh, a couple of instruments, I probably would have, uh -huh. uh -huh. you know. So, so a lot has to do with who's around you, how you're going to play those solos, right? right? If I'm in a duo situation and I'm playing something, well, then I'm mm -hmm. trying to cover bass and cover chords and all that sort of stuff so if I'm in a like a duo situation if it was just like me and a sax or something I'd be going let's see I try and kind of keep the melody going and I guess that sounds more complex than it, it, it is I grew up playing that stuff so that is easy to me that comes naturally is doing all that uh, moving bass line uh, sort of material so anyway um, we've talked about these other couple of things let's get on some a couple of other questions um, eraser you had asked about uh, fixing our audio issues so because uh, my voice was lower on the last uh, recording than uh, the uh, guitar, so we're working out that. We're actually getting some more mics and getting some more tech of this. So uh, in a couple of weeks, this should get a whole lot better. So uh, John V from Modesto, California asked, my question is on the 16th notes. Am I plucking four times prior to the next click and the click is the next four uh, or the fifth pluck, if you will? What he's asking is that, is it, as, as the metronome's coming by, let's say here's my metronome. See, 
So it's four equal subdivisions. One, two, three, four, next three, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and that's how you uh, line up your click when you're doing sixteenth notes. So here's quarter notes, da, 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 eighth notes, da, 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 da. Dot dot triplets dot 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 and then the last one sixteenth notes one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four so that's how you count sixteenth notes also he was asking about an exercise that I had talked about which is start at a quarter note at sixty beats per minute and do your favorite scale exercise and then play through it until you can get up to sixteenth notes at sixty beats per minute unfortunately I don't have my um, um, I don't have my uh, metronome here with me. But what I was trying to get at in that exercise is if you're trying to learn a scale or trying to really uh, uh, work on to get it underneath your fingers, you start out with, for me, I start out with a metronome at 60 beats per minute, which is about, about there, maybe a little bit faster. And I do quarter notes there. gradually speed that up until I can do eighth notes. And I work that up, and then eventually I want to get to where I can do sixteenth notes. And these are just points. If you could do uh, sixteenth notes at sixty beats uh, uh, a minute, then you're at a pretty good clip for, for learning how to do these scales and things like that. So that's kind of always my benchmark. If I could do them at sixty beats uh, or at sixteenth notes at sixty beats a minute, then I know I've got a pretty good handle on uh, whatever the technical task I'm working on. So that's a little bit about that. Um, give me that second page there. Yes, sir. Uh, let's skip down to Reggie. Reggie uh, asked, share some insights on guitar and keyboard players working together. Well, we've kind of already talked about that. Um, one frequent problem, Reggie asked. By the way, Reggie, if you're, I don't know if you're on here or not, Reggie is the April student of the month here at Learn and Master Guitar. So you will see him in our newsletter, which newsletter comes out probably Thursday of this week. We tried to get it out today, but there's still some proofing things we we're working on. So it'll probably come out on uh, Thursday. Anyway, Reggie is our student of the month. Uh, Reggie asks, when keyboard players are doing rhythm, how can they balance not being bored out of their minds playing simple chords while at the same time not playing too much at once and leaving some sonic territory for the guitar, I will let Dino answer the question about keyboard players being bored out of their minds. <laughs> well, once again, key is listening. I mean, if, if you have a, a guitar player that you just, uh, that, that, and you listen to what he's doing, there's always something to do to make it, to, to make it interesting. And uh, that's, I always look for that. I always look for, um, I, I look for different ways to voice chords and experiment. I'll, I'll, I'll add, I'll add some uh, colorings to notes. I'll add an added two or a ninth or, uh, or a major seven sometimes. Uh, and it depends if it's, if it's pop music or if it's jazz, you gotta add the right notes. If it's gospel, if it's uh, whatever songs you're doing, uh, you, um, you have to, Add the right notes so that you're not taking it out of the, the genre, and somebody goes, yeah. "Oh, what are you doing there?" Because uh, I've I've gotten a lot of those too in the past too, and I've kind of learned over the years. Oops, I better not play that because that's going to make the, the bass player mad, and I better not do that because that'll make the lead singer mad. Because uh, I'm taking this this uh, uh, bluegrass song into a jazz idiom that they don't want to do, and they're not used to, or, or country. You know, you have to. You have to do the right chords at the right time, the right bass walk-ups as a piano player. So there's there's so many different rules that you can do. There's rules that you can break. Uh, there's a lot to, to keep you busy and to keep you thinking. Um, now there was a gig one time that I did that was, it was real slow <laughs> and real, it was a real, real boring gig. And I'll tell you, tell you what I had to do is I, I literally would, would change the key so that I could practice if the song was in G, I would play it. I would change it so I would play an A flat to, to keep me sharp, to keep me, to keep me practiced 
on you know the key of A flat or the key of G flat because I don't like those keys. I like G the best. <laughs> so if it's just you know if it's something like that, you got to you got somebody sing. I would just, uh, I would change it to, and, and so the key is in G, and, and, and uh, I would bend it down, and, and I would bend the A down to the G, and I would play it in A, or then I would bend, play it in, in, in A flat if I bend it up. So, so that's kind of how I would just kind of keep, keep things, but, but uh, I always would listen to the guitar player, and if the guitar player was playing something uh, just just very very flowing and very classy I, I would I would try not to to play anything herky jerky or anything uh, hard I would I would I would once again it's listening and it's feeling and this is the deal with 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 anything any instrument that you play me as a piano player um, I feel like that, that no matter what musicians get together and either no matter what caliber the musicians get together if you have some guys that are way better than you or some guys that are that are way worse than you you could you know you could help and bring everything together just by listening to each other and and uh, and and taking that thing that everybody has the talent that, that was given in to everyone uh, in that group and yeah. whoever you're playing with and there is a there is a gelling that can happen with everybody that you play with. Now, unless this guy that you're playing with or this person you're playing with doesn't hear and doesn't want to listen, doesn't. But as long as you've got uh, the mental uh, capacity together and the and the, the the relationship together, where you you agree, hey, I'm going to listen to each other. We're going to listen to each other and we're going to play. You will make beautiful music together, and you will figure out rhythms, and you will figure out little little yeah. accents and everything that, that can uh, that will always make your world there's always another thing to play there's always another progression yeah. another little um, movement you know a lot of times if, if I'm going to a four chord I'll throw that in just because I know it sounds good you know and 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 a lot of times people look around and go oh yeah that's nice so that just creates energy and so then, so then the the bass player will end up doing something after that, and then the guitar oh. player will end up doing something after that, and then that's that's how we 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 have our uh, you know, we have camaraderie together and uh, keep it all interesting. And Dino, you've played for so many so many great things over the years, uh, from small things to big things. I know one of the things that you have done that I've I've just always been fascinated with. You you played at the White House. You played yeah, for the President yeah. of the United States. Tell us about that for a yes. second. Oh, well, I mean, it was, I mean, this, it's, uh, this was around a time when uh, Desert uh, Shield uh, was, was up and came back and everybody uh, was a very successful um, uh, comeback from, from every, uh, all the, all the uh, soldiers came back and there was a million people at the, around the White House and uh, we we got to play for the president there. Uh, and this was with Alabama. This was this was with Barbara Mandrell. Barbara Mandrell. Yes. So Barbara Mandrell is where we got we got to do it. And there was there was these big jumbotrons and next to these big uh, tanks and next to these big <laughs> uh, there was just uh, just all up on the on the White House. Uh, well, you know where the White House is and and the the big uh, just just all the areas around uh, yeah. around the White House and everything. Where this this big gathering was, and uh, just an amazing thing. Got to meet uh, uh, a lot of a lot of different people, a lot of different uh, dignitaries, and 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 and, and there uh, it, was a, it was a real real honor. I'll tell you the truth, man. You know, when you know your music and when when you play in for for years, you know that's kind of secondary. I, I mean, after after you get you're excited to be in, in all this amongst everyone and you know you're standing next to Charlton Heston and Louis Anderson and <laughs> Sophia Loren and I mean just just a bunch of different folks too that, that you're they're like man you know there's Charlton Heston he's Moses man you know? uh, <laughs> so uh, but but anyway but when you get on on stage man you're playing your G chords and you're playing stuff that you practiced yeah. when you were in your in your room so so it's a piece of you coming out and and uh, 
you, you, I just consider it a blessing that uh, that you get. You, you know, your talent can take you places. Yeah. Ta talent yeah. will take you to places where uh, where you never expect. Sometimes. Yeah. So keep working yeah. at it, everybody. Keep working at uh, your instrument. And uh, this was this is a great gift that God gives us. Yeah. And uh, we should use it. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Dino. Thank um, you. One of the questions, let me try and answer a couple of these questions before we run out of time. Uh, Reggie goes on to ask, um, um, he asked about, are there exercises uh, for keyboard and guitar, especially for blues? Well, I found a great blues uh, course put out by Alfred uh, Publishing. Uh, it's, uh, he, they put out uh, jam along tracks. They're great. They're fantastic. So the one that I found was the ultimate play along guitar tracks, uh, blues. Tom, maybe you can find this link for us. It's called Ultimate Play Along Guitar Tracks, T-A-R-X, and then uh, colon, Blues. It's put out by Alfred Publishing. It's 1995, and it's a whole CD and book of play along tracks that you can play with. But what makes these great is that they're great players playing on them. You have Robin Ford that's doing the solo and showing you how to do that solo. And... Uh, uh, Scott Henderson and all these phenomenal players. So that is a great series. They have one for rock and I think one for jazz as well. So the Alfred Music Publishing uh, Ultimate Play Along Guitar Tracks series is a great series. Um, Gary from London, you asked, uh, you, you showed me that uh, uh, Leonard Skinner Freebird video and you were asking while well, the keyboardist player is playing their solo, they are playing the left hand chords and then they're kind of soloing on top with the right hand. This is a very common way of approaching soloing on keyboard. You know, you can probably talk more about that. But you're you're keeping the 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 bass notes or even some of the notes of the chord going in your left hand, and then you're kind of soloing over the top of it with your right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I mean, there's some guys that'll that'll play. You know, they really got the stretch and everything so that you can play the, the, the note and the chord. You can hear the chord and then... Uh -huh. But uh, uh, what I love to do whenever there's a... You know, once once again, when there's more instruments and there's uh -huh. a bass holding down that bass note, I don't even mess with the bass note. In fact, most bass players want you to get away from that. <laughs> they want you to get away from that left hand. And so my left hand will chord... you can do you know and learn with your with your uh, left hand I mean I, once again I have a, a bunch to learn about that because you could go forever playing all kind of different left hand chords and uh, uh, you know uh, play right hand all day just there's a, that's a very jazz way of approaching that a lot of times you hear jazz keyboardists they'll in the in the left hand they'll just be doing a little little just you know a third and a, a seventh you know a little color tone and they're just and then just they're soloing with the right hand over the top of it. Something like that. Now, you as a guitar player, if you have your thinking cap on, you can kind of approach things that way as well and just play little bits of chords. I can't solo on top of it, but I can just do like. Just playing little, nice. little pieces of chords, and uh, you can get a lot of good uh, guitar comp comping in as well. Doing that, one more question we had one from Big Al in, in Devon, England. Um, we had talked last week about guitar players with small hands, how to deal with that. Well, Big Al is a big guy, 6'6, six, six, and he asked about playing guitar with big hands. How do you do with that? Well, they have a unique set of uh, problems that happens with guitar players with large hands as well. He, he can, <laughs> this is very typical. He says, I can get six string bar chords with no problem. The problem is the fifth string bar chords. Well, yes, that would be because your fingers are overshooting. And what I would say to you, Al, is uh, go ahead and overshoot. Even if I'm playing a, like a C minor here, go ahead and you can, you can press down this finger all the way up over the sixth string. Just don't play that unless you unless you're in control of it and have it. I can still overshoot this completely 
and play this with a down. I'm, it's not like I'm trying to do this. I don't know if you can see that instead of going up, down, going way overshooting it. I'd say it's okay to overshoot and then just play the correct amount of notes on this uh, uh, with your uh, right hand as it's doing the strumming. So go ahead and overshoot as much as you can and work, you know, there's things that you have to work out with big hands that uh, are similar problems that small-handed people have to work out, but you'll work out ways. Sometimes you have to kind of tilt your hand back, the very thing I tell you not to do. Uh, sometimes in order to get some chords, you're going to have to tilt that hand a little bit in order to get those fingers in the, in the way that they need to be. So, cool. All right. Uh, any questions, uh, just as we're closing up, I know we have a last uh, uh last minute or two. Um, great, Al, I see you right there. Um, we're offering, it's blues month, so the guys are offering a uh, big sale on the blues course, so $49, it's half off from what it normally is, so uh, that uh, uh, special is going on. You're, when you get the newsletter, which is gonna get to your email boxes in about a day or two, uh, there'll be a link there that you can get uh, to link in and get the blues course for half price. Uh, which is unusual that they would offer it that low. So anyway, so that's the big special for the blues course. A couple other announcements. Oh, I got a good one. Uh, the Guitar Gathering is coming, of which, Dino, you're going to be at the hey, Guitar Gathering. I'm there. Uh, Dino has been at every Guitar Gathering. I think you've played at every one of them. I'm, I'm surprised you're not sick of me. <laughs> Dino's played at every Guitar Gathering we've had, and uh, uh, he'll be at the one coming up as well. And then I got our Guitar Gathering is our conference that we have here in Nashville, June 22nd through the 26th. It is a lot of fun. Um, uh, I do workshops, master classes with folks, group lessons with folks. We'll have ensembles that folks will be playing in. And we have artists that come in and do workshops for us as well. We'll have Pete Huttlinger, a uh, world-renowned uh, fingerstyle guitarist. He'll be doing a master class and an evening concert for us. Rick Vito from Fleetwood Mac and Bob Seeger, he'll be playing uh, doing a slide workshop for us. We also have uh, uh, Brian White. Um, you don't even yeah, know about that. Brian, uh, Brian's nice. going to do a uh, uh, songwriting workshop for us as well. And then uh, just got confirmed this week. Uh, very excited. Uh, Will McFarlane. Uh, do you know Will? I know of Will, yes. Yes. Uh, Will is a guitar player for Bonnie Raitt and also played in the famous Muscle Shoals uh, rhythm section. Will is legendary in uh, guitar circles and with all the things that he's played with. And uh, in fact, I was doing some research on him. I put a picture of him up on, the, up on the discussion board. It's a picture of him and he's playing guitar and you see James Taylor, Carly Simon, and then uh, uh, who, what's now a congressman, John Hall, was playing bass. So he was up there playing with James Taylor. Anyway, so Will McFarlane, he's been, been inducted into the Musicians Hall of Fame. Uh, so he's going to come up and do a blues guitar workshop for us as well, so it's very much a treat. So if you haven't already registered, go ahead and check it out. Um, lots of good fun there, and uh, love to see you. I'd love to meet you as well. Um, we only have a couple of more days for the Acoustic Guitar Player Magazine's Player's Choice Award, so if you haven't uh, voted in that, uh, please vote uh, for that. That shuts down this Friday on April 15th, so uh, uh, please vote for us. We're in the instructional materials category as well as the guitar camps category. Um, next week is April 19th and we will have our live lesson and uh, I thought since it's the week before uh, Easter I would do an arrangement of a hymn. Uh, this is my father's world that I learned from uh, Ron Block, the guitar player for Allison Krauss. And uh, so I'll teach you Ron Block's arrangement of uh, this is my father's world. I'll try to have that all tabbed out for you. Uh, and then on May 10th about three or four weeks from now, uh, our special guest is going to be uh, the great Johnny Highland. will be playing a guitar with us as well. So Great. don't miss all those things. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you have learned something uh, through the course of this. Thank you, Dino, so much Thank for coming, you, my friend. being part Thank of you. all this craziness. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Always a pleasure. And uh, we're going to play one tune as we uh, finish it up. We're going to do All of Me. And uh, I know you guys, if you're in session 18, you've probably played All of Me, at least with the old course. And uh, so we're going to play a jazz tune, All of Me. And as we finish out, I hope you guys are doing great. Catch a little bit of practicing in this week. Um, love you. I'm glad you're doing this. Keep up the good work. It's, uh, being a musician is a wonderful thing. That's right. Wouldn't rather be doing anything else. Thank you, everybody. All right. We'll do All of Me, and we will catch you guys later. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs>
All right. Good night, everybody. We'll see you.